Hi everyone, so in this video we discuss uh, a strategy for uh, setting the states or the state values in recurrent neural networks through, so it's it, you can think of it as an alternative strategy to basically the recurrent connections uh, and this is what's called echo state networks and as we'll progress through the videos we will see uh, a way of uh, basically combining uh, this echo state network approach with learning the recurrent uh, parameters. Right, so uh, so echo state networks basically uh, depend on a strategy that is uh, called in a larger uh, research area called reservoir computing, and the idea <coughs> is basically you want your state to be a re to uh, represent a reservoir of the temporal features up to this point. Right, so let's assume causality to simplify things. Right, so there is only a connection from h of t minus one to h of t. And from x of t, the input to h of t, right? And these are, as we have seen so far, they, they are difficult to learn. And there is a lot of concern about, from an optimization perspective, about what could go wrong in terms of vanishing and exploding gradient, right? So echo state networks basically rely on setting the weights rather than learning them. These tricky weights of the input to hidden and the hidden to hidden, right? And the main guideline is that you think of the system as a dynamical system, right? So this is an, an optimization or a control problem, and you want to set the parameters of this system such that this system doesn't go unstable, right? So what does it mean? It means that basically you take the Jacobian corresponding to the state-to-state -state transition, and you want the eigenvalues of that Jacobian to be close to 1. Right? So that you avoid explosion or vanishing in both forward propagation and backward propagation. And most importantly, you avoid that an error, propagate, you avoid the exponentiation of errors as you forward or backward propagate. Right? So you take the Jacobian matrix of the state to state transition and you want the eigenvalues to be close to one. In particular, you want the spectral radius what is known as the spectral radius or the maximum eigenvalue of the Jacobian, you want the magnitude of that to be close to one, right? So uh, so why are we doing, uh, so wh wh why is the name, why is the name echo state network? Because it's as if the state at time t echoes, right? So it's an echo of the state at time t minus one. The eigenvalues close to one doesn't constrain the direction of the uh, the directions of the Jacobian, right? It constrains the magnitudes, so it doesn't constrain the eigenvectors, the directions represented by the eigenvectors. So you are allowed to do rotations in terms of the state-to-state -state transition in a vector space sense, but you are not allowed to do expansion or contraction. Contraction meaning that the spectral radius less than one, expansion meaning that the spectral radius is much bigger than one right or bigger than one so let's so this is the main idea right and um, so uh, let's let's think of some uh, um, like let's take some notes and think of some important comments one comment is that the derivative of the nonlinearity will typically approach zero right in many time steps because it's uh, it's rarely the case that all the nonlinearities right uh, that uh, let's say I have ReLU that all of them will be active across the different time steps, right? So that might help prevent the error magnitude explosion even if I have a large spectral rate. So this is one important comment. So in, in these cases, right? So that might be one motivation of why we don't need echo state networks, for example, right? But this is something that will differ uh, problem by problem and even from for the same problem from one input to another right and I'll come back to that also again uh, uh, shortly this idea of all the uh, hidden layer activation being active simultaneously at the same time now if the spectral radius is less than one we say that the mapping is contractive right so mapping is contractive meaning the error will not explode but it also means that the the parameters which we care about will also be forgotten like whatever you learn in one time step will be forgotten quickly 
as as you go through time right so that's why a spectral radius that is less than one or a contractive mapping is not a good thing because you forget easily and an expansive mapping or a spectral radius that's bigger than one will help propagate the error and this is the main intuition behind the idea of wanting the eigenvalues to be close to one right also not just the spectral radius wanting all the eigenvalues to be close to one is important because it makes you learn along all the directions that correspond to the eigenvectors because as we have mentioned before right if there is one uh, eigenvalue that dominates when i exponentiate the weight matrix that eigenvalue, the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue, becomes almost only the uh, almost the only direction where I'm learning, right? So I lose the expressive power of the network, and this is the intuition of. So first two parts, we have an intuition of why the spectral radius of the Jacobian or the maximum eigenvalue should be close to one, right? because we don't want the mapping to be contractive we don't want to forget we don't want the mapping to be expensive we don't want the error to propagate even along only the direction corresponding to the maximum eigenvalue this is one the second is that not only that we make the spectral radius close to one we make all the eigenvalues close to one because we don't want one direction to dominate the learning process we want to be learning along all the directions corresponding to all the eigenvectors, right? Now, two, la two more comments before we end. One is that you could combine the recurrent neural, the traditional recurrent neural network with echostate networks. Maybe echostate networks can help you initialize the trainable weights, right? And then you can learn them. So it puts you in a point close to stability and then you can proceed learning from there so that approach if you are more curious about it it's available in this uh, paper on the importance of initialization and momentum in deep learning was in icml 13. the other which is interesting but it might not have significant pr uh, practical impact but it's still interesting and important to note because maybe in some situation it does occur is that even in cases so think of the nonlinearity as tang 10 hyperbolic units these units are active only in a small region and otherwise they are not active basically they are they saturate right so when they are active they are in the linear region right when they are in, let's say i have a series of tang units that are active together and this is the thing that's rare to happen in practice. If this is the case, then I don't have a guarantee on, um, then I, I don't have, uh, I, I do have a guarantee on how forward, pro the dynamics of forward propagation, because the tang units have upper and lower bounds, right? So they are, even if they are in the linear region, I know that I cannot explode or vanish in terms of the forward propagation. But in backward propagation, this is not the case, right? Because in backward propagation, the gradient can still explode or vanish in that linear region, right? So what, what a linear region does is that it just lets the gradient in, right? So when the ReLU is active, when the tang is active, it lets the gradient in. When it's inactive, it suppresses the gradient. That gradient could still propagate, explode, or vanish over time. So even when the forward propagation has bounded dynamics, it's still possible for the back propagation to have unbounded uh, dynamics, right? So one takeaway lesson from this video is the importance of the notion of the spectral radius. And that's something, even if you are not using echostate networks or reservoir computing, that's something you could monitor through training your recurrent neural network to understand uh, more deeply the reason of why let's say uh, your optimization is not working well thank you